Hello everyone, welcome to this unit. In this video, I'm going to talk about the step-by-step -step process of accurate density of a state and band structure calculations using VASP and some ways of plotting the band structure and density of a state for our system. So by listening to this video, we will learn how to perform density of a state and band structure calculations for our uh, target systems and uh, then how to plot these pro properties. Also, we will understand the main reason of the inconsistency between density of a state and band structures and what points we need to take into consideration in order to take a more accurate results and remove this in, uh, inconsistency between the density of a state and band structure calculations that is very important. Indeed, we may face uh, this problem that uh, our density of a state and band structure calculations are not consistent. Uh, for example, uh, the band gap in our density of a state calculations is uh, larger than the results in the band structure calculations. Uh, or uh, our band structure calculations show a metallic system, for example, However, our band structure calculations show a semiconducting system with a band gap. In this video, I will try to cover all these points to obtain a more accurate calculations and remove this kind of inconsistency. So let's get started. There are generally four steps. Uh, the first step is a structure relaxation, and the second step is self-consistent calculation. Indeed, these two steps, uh, step one and step two, can be performed in only one step, but it's more safe to be divided into two steps. In the first step, structure relaxation, we optimize our target structure and use the relaxed structure in CONCAR file for other steps, uh, step two, three, and four, that uh, we need to copy the CONCAR file from the step one to the postcar file to the step two, three, and four uh, as a relaxed structure. In the first step, we do not need to get the charge density file, CHG car file, if we have self-consistent calculation. In the second step, we perform only single point self-consistent calculation to obtain the charge density file, CHG car file and use this file for the steps 3 and 4 for uh, the calculation of the density of a state and band structure. Indeed, we can combine the first two steps, step 1 and step 2, into one step, but we need to obtain both charge density file and relax the structure for other steps uh, to, together. Here I would recommend to do a step one and two, which is more safe. After obtaining the charge density file uh, and relax the structure from step one and step two, we can use them for density of a state and band structure calculation in a step three and four. In the rest of this video, I will explain the step-by-step -step procedure to perform that. Well, uh, the first step is to relax the structure. Here I took silicon structure as an example. In the in-car file, uh, I use the accurate uh, mode for the PREC tag, which specifies the precision mode. I start uh, is equal to zero and I charge uh, equals to two, which means that we do a new calculation and uh, we don't start from the previous wave car and charge car files. And for the electronic optimization, as I said in the previous videos in this channel, I always recommend to use 130% of the EN max parameter in podcar file for the cutoff energy in the in-car file. By checking the podcar file, we can find that the EN max uh, of the silicon in PBE functional is uh, 245.345. Uh, and the 130 percent of this value is almost uh, 320 electron volt, and we use this value as the uh, EN cut energy cutoff in the in-car file. Here I use a PBE functional in the podcar file for uh, silicon structure. I smear determines how the partial occupancies are set for each orbital and the sigma 
determines uh, the width of the smear in, uh, in electron volt. I smear equals zero is a Gaussian smearing, and the Gaussian smearing method leads to very reasonable results uh, in most uh, cases. For the ionic relaxation, I uh, tag determines whether the stress sensor is calculated and which principal degree of freedom are allowed to change in our relaxation runs. We have uh, different options uh, for uh, this tag, which depends on our structure and our target. Here I use ICIF equals uh, 3, which allows us uh, all atoms, uh, cell shape, and cell volume be relaxed. As I said, we have different options for ICIF tag in VASP. For example, in ICIF uh, equals uh, zero, we have a uh, degree of freedom just for positions of atoms. Uh, it means that uh, just uh, atoms can be relaxed and the forces can be calculated. And for example, in ICIF equals two, is the same as ICIF equals to, one, uh, to zero. But uh, we have we can also calculate the stress sensors. And ICIF equals uh, to three. We have the relaxation for the positions of atoms and the cell shape uh, and also cell volume. And as you can see, there are more options, and uh, you can uh, choose one of these tags based on uh, uh, what you need and what uh, your structure is uh, needed to be relaxed. Iberium uh, determines how the ions are updated and moved, and I use a conjugate gradient algorithm, which is Iberium equals uh, 2. NSW uh, sets a maximum number of ionic steps, and I use uh, 200 steps. Uh, that is more than enough for this case. EDIFF uh, specifies the global break condition for the electronic self-consistent loop. The relaxation of the electronic degrees of freedom will be stopped if the total uh, energy change between the two steps uh, are smaller than uh, this value, EDIFF. EDIFFG is, uh, uh, defines the break condition for the ionic relaxation loop. If the change in the total energy is, is uh, smaller than the EDIFFG, between two ionic steps, relaxation will be stopped. If uh, EDIFFG is negative, it has a different meaning. Uh, in this case, the relaxation will stop if all forces are a small, uh, smaller than the uh, absolute value of the EDIFFG. This is usually a more convenient setting uh, that, uh, to use a negative value. ISIM uh, determines the way VASP uh, treats uh, symmetry, and for ISIM equals uh, zero, VASP does not uh, use symmetry, which is more uh, time consuming, of course. It depends on our structure, and if uh, the structure has uh, already symmetry, we could turn the symmetry on in our calculation. And in this case, I could uh, use ISIM equals one, on the use of uh, symmetry, since our structure has symmetry. And also, there are more tags here uh, that we can uh, uh, control uh, writing the you know, wave car file or charge car file. And because, as I said, in the structure relaxation, we don't need the uh, uh, charge density file, uh, I uh, turn this tag off. And uh, the next input file is k-points file. k-points file must contain the k-point coordinates and weights uh, or the mesh size for creating the k-point grid. Here I choose 11 by 11 by 11 points, uh, which is enough for this case. If you are not sure about the right number of k-points for your structure, uh, what you need to do is that you need to increase the k-points and uh, compare the total energy of your system until uh, the difference uh, between the energies are less than, uh, for example, point, uh, 0.01 electron volt. Then you can be sure that you have the right number of k-points and uh, this procedure is called uh, k-point convergency. Here, uh, 0, 0, 0 means that we don't shift it, uh, we don't shift the k-points, 
and these K points uh, center uh, at the gamma point in the brillium zone. Well, uh, the next input file is a postcar file which contains the lattice geometry and the ionic positions of uh, our structure. Here I use a symmetrized silicon structure which contains eight atoms. Uh, you can use primitive uh, structure which contains only two atoms in a diamond uh, structure. Here you can see that uh, we have a cubic structure which uh, the lattice parameters are uh, 5.43 angstrom and the positions of each atom in our unit cells. You can get different structures from materialsproject.org uh, website. In this website, the CIF format uh, of the this different structure could be obtained, and what you need to do is just transferring the CIF uh, to Postcard file for your uh, uh, calculation. There are some ways to do this transformation, and uh, one of the easiest one is using Vesta software. And I will show you briefly how to do that in the next slide. Here you can uh, download the computed structure or conventional uh, standard uh, structure or primitive cell or symmetric cell. Transferring CIF file to Postcard file is very easy using VESA file. When you open your CIF file using VESA, you need to go just to the file and then export data and uh, export your structure as a Postcard file for VASP in your directory. After making all the input files, INCAR, POSCAR, PODCAR, and KPOINT files, we can run the case uh, using VASP to relax our structure. When the calculation is done and we reach the energy criteria for the convergency, we will get many output files, and in this step, uh, only the relaxed structure, which is in the CONTCAR file, is important for us. So what we need to do is just taking this CONTCAR file and relax the structure for the next steps. By comparing the CONTCAR file, which includes the relaxed structure, with the POSCAR file, which includes the initial structure, we can clearly see that the lattice parameter are changed from 5.43 to 5.43. 46 uh, angstrom and the positions of uh, ions are also changed however here the atomic positions in the postcard file are in cartesian coordinate uh, but in kant car file uh, the atomic positions are always in direct coordinates what we need to do in this step is just as i said uh, is using the relaxed structure kant car file for other steps by copying the CONCAR file into the POSCAR file of the steps 2, 3, and uh, 4. Well, by copying the CONCAR file from the first step to the POSCAR file uh, of the steps uh, 2, 3, and 4, we basically use uh, the relaxed structure for the rest uh, of the calculations. Now we need to perform the single point energy uh, calculations or self-consistent calculation to obtain the charge density file, uh, CHG car file. As I said before, we could combine both first and second steps into one step to get both uh, relaxed structure and charge density file but it's more safe to perform uh, different calculations uh, as I explain uh, here in this channel. Now let's do self-consistent calculation. We basically use the same podcar file for all the steps. And for the self-consistent calculation, we have the relaxed structure from the first step and K points uh, as well are the same as, a, as the first step. For the self-consistent calculation, the only change comparing with the first step for the relaxation step, we need to change the in-car file. For the self-consistent calculation, we do not need the ionic movement. By, uh, uh, by setting the Iberium equals minus 1, the ions are not moved, but NSW outer loops uh, are performed. In each outer loop, the electronic degrees of freedom are re-optimized. If no ionic update is required, 
we need to use NSW equals to zero instead. So the only change in the in-car file for the self-consistent calculation we need to make is uh, setting Ibrion equals to minus one and NSW equals to zero. And also we can uh, turn off the ISIF tag, but uh, if uh, when we set uh, zero for the NSW, uh, VAS automatically turn this tag off and we don't need to do that. Then uh, we need to go to the second folder uh, for the self-consistent calculation. After making these changes in the in-car file and run VAS again. Self-consistent calculation is uh, basically faster than the first step since it's uh, only one step. After reaching the energy criteria, we will get many output files uh, like the first step. But in this step, the charge density file, CHG car file, is important for us. What we need to do is uh, just uh, to copy the CHG car file to the third and the fourth steps for density of a state and band structure calculation. After obtaining the relaxed structure from step one and the charge density file from step two, which was the self-consistent calculation, it's time to perform density of a state calculation. We have already passed car file, which is uh, the relaxed structure from step one and the charge density file, CHG car file from step two in our uh, folders for density of a state and band structure calculations. As I said, we use the same path car file for all the steps. In this step for performing density of a state calculation, we need only to do some changes in in-car and k-point files. First, uh, in-car file. In the in-car file, we change the I start from uh, 0 to 1 and it means that we do not start from the scratch and I start equals one means a continuation job and we uh, restart with a constant energy cutoff. And orbitals are read from the wave car file and the set of plane waves will be redefined according to the new cell size and the new plane wave cutoff uh, energy. These values might differ from the old values that are stored in the wave car file. We do not need to worry about these tags since the wave car file, uh, uh, if the wave car file is missing or if the wave car file contains uh, an inappropriate number of bands or k points, uh, the, uh, the, the IS start will revert automatically to IS start equals zero by VASP. And the next change is uh, I charge from two to 11 and uh, I charge equals 11 is to obtain the eigenvalues for band structure plus or density of a state uh, for a given charge density read from CHG car file. The self-consistent calculation, the self-consistent CHG car file must be determined beforehand doing a fully self-consistent calculation with a k-point read spanning the entire beryllium zone and as we did in the second step. So in the second step, we did the self-consistent calculation to obtain this, this uh, charge density file. The second change in the in-car file for the density of a state calculation is uh, changing I smear to minus five, which is a tetrahedron method for a smearing, and is highly suggested for density of a state calculations. This parameter is important to get a more accurate uh, density of a state calculation and it could be one of the possible source of uh, inconsistency between the calculated density of a state and the published results. So changing the I smear to minus five to use the tetrahedron method is highly suggested for density of a state calculations to get more accurate uh, results for our uh, density of a state calculation. The next changes are related to some parameters uh, for the control the density of a state calculations. We set uh, L orbit uh, equals uh, to 11 to get both uh, total density of a state and the uh, projected density of a state uh, in uh, in uh, dust car file. NEDOS uh, specifies uh, the number of grid points on which the density of a state is evaluated. 
the energy range between uh, E min and E max uh, is divided into NE DOS. And then uh, the density of a state for each uh, corresponding energy is written in a DOSCAR file. The default value for this parameter, uh, NEDOS, in VASP is 301. And if the density of a state uh, has narrow peaks, the default uh, NEDOS uh, may be too small to resolve uh, all peaks properly. Indeed, this, uh, this parameter can be one of the other source of the inconsistency between the calculated density of a state and the published results. So we, we need to increase this uh, value uh, to, for example, 1000 uh, in order to get more accurate results. We can also control the boundary of the energy range for the evaluation of density of a state. For example, if we need only the density of a state between minus 5 and 5, we can control our output results by E min and E max, uh, which is the boundary of the energy range for the evaluation of the uh, density of states. Otherwise, if we don't control them, a VASP will give us the density of a state in the whole range of the energy. Here, I deactivated these two tags to get uh, the density of a state uh, for the whole ener energy. But if you need just the density of a state for a specific range of energy, you can uh, use these two tags. The second change for the density of a state calculation is the k-point file. And we need to apply a much denser k-point grids to get a much uh, better results comparing for the relaxation uh, of our structure. So we need to increase the k-point density from 11 um, uh, by 11 by 11 to 25 by 25 uh, by 25. Indeed, the applying a dense uh, enough k-point grid is very important to get uh, consistent results between the density of a state and band structure calculations. Sometimes uh, it, it is asked that, for example, why uh, our band structure calculation show a smaller band gap than uh, our uh, density of a state calculation. So k-point grid could be one of the main source of the in this inconsistency. In order to remove this inconsistency, we need to apply uh, enough dense k-point grid to get uh, consistent results between the density of a state calculation and the band structure calculation. After applying a, dense, uh, a denser k-point grid, then uh, we are ready to run the vast calculation for the density of a state calculation. After performing the calculation, the results of both total and project density of a state uh, are written to DOSCAR file. And the only thing that we need to do is plotting the results uh, that we need. The first two values here are the boundary of the energy level that the density of a state is evaluated, E min and E max parameter in INCAR file. As I said, we could control these two values. Uh, by E min and E max in the INCAR file. And the second value is the number of grid points on which the density of a state is evaluated. And uh, again, as I said, in the INCAR file, we could control this uh, value by NE DOS in the INCAR file. And we set 1000 for the NE DOS in the INCAR file. So it means that the boundary of the energy level is divided to 1000 points. The fourth value here is the Fermi energy of the system. Indeed, we can plot the results in different way that is more uh, convenient for us uh, using different tools. Here, I will explain two of these tools that is more practical. The first way, which is very quick, is using P4, P4 VASP. And the second way that uh, let uh, us more flexibility uh, to plot our results uh, in the way that we like and we desire is VASP kit. I will explain both these tools in the next slides.
Well, a very quick way of uh, checking density of a state is using p4wasp. After opening p4wasp in the directory uh, that uh, you have a density of a state calculation, we need to press uh, the OS plus bands icon and uh, p4wasp automatically read the Doscar file. You can immediately see the total density of a state as you can see here. Note that in P4 VASP, the Fermi energy will be automatically shifted to zero. And uh, so zero is the Fermi energy here. And all the data is also shifted according to the Fermi energy. Here you can see the calculated band gap of silicon. Since we have uh, set uh, L orbit equals to 11, we have the data of the project the density of a state, and we can plot uh, uh, the project the density of a state as well. In order to plot the project density of a state, we need to go to electronic up here, and then local density of a state and bands control here. Uh, then we will uh, get this uh, window. For plotting the project density of a state in different orbitals, the first thing we need to do is deselect all orbitals and select uh, each orbital one by one that uh, we like to plot. For example, here we first uh, select S orbital, and since we have only silicon atom in this uh, system, we type uh, silicon here. But in the cases that uh, we have two or three or more different uh, uh, atoms, we could uh, select uh, different atoms se separately. But here we type only silicon. And then uh, for a spin, because we don't have a spin up and down, we select both. But in some cases, we have a spin up and down when we need to plot the density of a state for each spin up and down separately. We need to select up and down separately. And uh, after clicking on uh, spin both, we need to select uh, our desired orbital, for example, here is S orbital, and add the symbol size 1, 2, or 3, and then add line. And you can see that the red line that is the project density of a state for S orbital will be added to this plot. And then we need to do the same for the P orbital. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the red line is for P orbital, and the green line is for S orbital. And after plotting for the S orbital, we need to do the same for P orbitals. And we need to deselect all again and select only P orbitals and then add line. And then uh, we can see that uh, this plot uh, will be appeared. And we have uh, uh, project density of a state for P, P orbital and S orbital separately. We may notice that the projected density of a state does not add up to the total density of a state, as you can see here. This is because we project density of a state until atomic orbitals, and there, uh, and there could be some space with, between the atoms that is not taken into account. Uh, so this is usual the sum of the projected density of a state is smaller than the total density of a state. Here we have only one uh, atomic type, as I said, which is the silicon. But if we have uh, different atomic types, uh, we could plot the project density of a state for each selected atom in uh, our atomic selection uh, box here. As I said before, there, there are uh, many ways to plot density of a state and other results from VASP. But uh, the other way uh, to plot density of a state and uh, I highly suggest uh, using that is uh, VASP-KIT, which is created by Wei Wang. VASP-KIT is a post-processing tool for VASP code, which um, has many capabilities, and, and I will uh, try to explain them one by one in this channel. I highly recommend using this tool, since it uh, gives you a flexibility to plot the results, different results, in the way that you like and you are desired. You can get this code from this link, uh, it's vaskit.sourceforge.net. When you run vaskit in your target directory, you can see that uh, there are many capabilities, as I said before. For example, we have many capabilities for a structure option, structural options and electronic options, charge and potential and wave function options, and uh, other utilities. 
For example, in the structural options, we have uh, options for K path generator. We will uh, use it in this uh, video. And for elastic properties and structure editor and symmetry search and many other things that is very, very useful for uh, uh, materials, uh, computational materials. And also some options uh, for electronic options. Uh, and uh, here is the uh, 21. Uh, option 21 is DFD band structure, and option 11 is density of a state. That in these these two options the, is uh, our uh, target for uh, density of a state and band structure calculation in uh, in this uh, unit. There are many others, for example, in 28 is band structure unfolding, and uh, 25 is hybrid DFT band structure, Fermi surface, and uh, charge and uh, spin density, potential related. And I will try to show you how we can use these options one by one in this channel. So here we are going to use, as I said, only option 11, density of a state, and option 21, uh, DFT band structure. And the first, let's start with option 11 for uh, extracting the band uh, density of a state results. Well, uh, when you choose option for density of a state uh, by typing 11, here uh, more options uh, would be open for you, such as uh, total density of a state and uh, projected density of a state for selected atoms, projected density of a state for each element, and the sum of the projected density of a state for selected atom and uh, for uh, uh, sum of projected density of a state for selected atom and orbitals. So uh, you can choose whatever you want to obtain. For example, the total density of a state or projected density of a state for selected atom or each element. Here we have only one element, which is uh, silicon. In our example, and we can get the projected density of a state for silicon atom by typing uh, 113. If you want to get the projected uh, density of a state uh, for selected atoms, for example, atom number only one or number two or whatever, you can use option 112. Input file which is required for VASCI to extract density of a state results uh, is the DOSCAR file. And the output uh, for total density of a state is uh, tdos.dat and also itdos.dat. In uh, tdos.dat, as you can see here, uh, we have the total density of a state, uh, which is written. And you can plot these calculated values using uh, whichever is more convenient for you to get your desired plot. For example, origin lab or GNU plot or tech plot and so on. So you have all the values here and you can plot them uh, in uh, the software or the tools that uh, you are more uh, comfort with that. The output file for projected density of a state is uh, pdos uh, underline silicon dot that. In this case, we can also get projected density of a state which is written in this file, pdos underline silicon dot that. The projected density of a state, as you can see here, is uh, written in for s orbital and p orbital in different directions and uh, also d orbitals. So we have everything here. And uh, what we need to do, just plot these values uh, for what we need. For example, if we need just uh, plot the Dense projected density of a state for s orbital, we need to take this column. And if we need to plot the projected uh, density of a state for, for example, in p orbital and in the x direction, we need to uh, just take this column and do plot. So as you can see here, VASKIT extract uh, the results for us, and uh, it, it uh, provides a many flexibility for us to plot these values in the way that we like and we we want to uh, make it. Now, after calculating density of a state, it's time to calculate band structure. For band structure calculation, uh, as I said before, we have already the relaxed structure from step one, which has a structure uh, relaxation in our postcard file. 
we have charge density file chg car file from step two which was a self-consistent cal calculation and the path car file is, is the same for all the steps for the band structure calculation we will use the same in car file of density of a state calculation and we do not need to change it uh, and the only change that we need to make is the uh, k points file indeed we need to select the right k pass for our band structure calculations that is uh, that uh, this right pass is uh, dependent on our uh, structure and uh, the symmetry of our structure and it's very important Basically, one of the main source of the inconsistency between um, the band structure calculation and density of a state calculation could be this pass, uh, this k pass. If you do not use the right k pass, uh, the band structure calculations are not consistent with our density of a state calculation. Finding the right k pass for our structure is sometimes uh, questionable. Fortunately, VASPKit provides this opportunity for us to find the right k pass for our uh, band structure calculation depending on the symmetry of uh, our structure. So we can get the we can we can find the right k pass for uh, all kind of a structure using uh, VASPKit. Well, uh, when we run VASPKit in the target uh, directory, there is an option for uh, k-pass uh, generating that is option uh, number three by typing three here in our terminal more options uh, would be opened for us uh, that we need to select uh, just one of them based on our structure for example we have 1d nanostructure 2d nanostructure and the 3d bulk structure and also we can uh, find the k-pass for phonopy for phonon calculation that uh, I will talk about that uh, in the next videos in this channel but here we have only 3d bulk structure so we need just to type a uh, 303 here to get the right k pass uh, for our structure then we will get two output files in our folder one is high symmetry points and the second one is k pass in in high symmetry points uh, here as you can see uh, we can see all the high symmetry points in fractional coordinates and uh, it is also suggested by VASKIT we can check them with the SIGPASS database that is the uh, database is the link the link is written here and we also can, uh, can double check uh, the high symmetry points with this database well uh, in kpass.in uh, output file we can see the k pass which is generated by VASKIT for our structure which is from gamma point to x and x to u and uh, so on and the last one is for example is from w to x so as you can see it's very easy uh, to use VASKIT to find uh, the right k pass for our structure so what we need to do is just to copy this k pass this output file that is generated by uh, VASKIT to our k points file for our band structure calculations so uh, finding the right k pass is always uh, a challenge for different structure and uh, VASKIT is easily provides this opportunity for us to find our right k pass and just uh, copy uh, the k pass the data which is written in kpass.in into the k points file for our band structure calculations uh, well uh, then we copy the k pass uh, to the k points file the line mode uh, here uh, means that we let the program to automatically complete the points in the line and the 100 points means that uh, there are 100 points in a line uh, VASKIT uh, gave us uh, 20 points uh, but here I increase it to 100 points which uh, provides more smooth results however uh, it increases the computation uh, time uh, as well uh, always the value of 50 for example would be safe enough uh, for our calculation and you can change it uh, to, the, to the number of points that you want 
So here there are 100 points uh, between, uh, for example, gamma to x and 100 points between x and u and uh, so on, and for example, 100 points uh, between w and x. Then uh, by finding the right uh, path in our k-point file, we are ready to run VAS to calculate our band structure. Well, after uh, performing a band structure calculation using VASP, uh, again, like density of a state calculation, a very quick way of checking band structure is using P4 VASP. After opening P4 VASP in the directory that the band structure calculation is performed, we need to press uh, go to the show here icon up here and then press uh, bands icon and uh, P4 VASP automatically read the PROCAR and K points file and you can immediate, immediately see the total band structure as you can see here. So as you can see here in the zero energy which is the Fermi energy there is a band gap and uh, it's an indirect band gap as well. Since we have set L orbit equals to L1 we have the data for the project uh, density of a state and band structure and we can plot the projected band structure as well like uh, projected density of a state. The procedure of plotting a projected band structure is exactly the same as uh, projected density of a state uh, as explained uh, before. We need to go to electronic uh, icon here and then the local density of a state and the bands control. And then we need to type uh, silicon uh, in the atom selection uh, box here and deselect all the uh, orbitals and select just, uh, for example, uh, P orbitals. And uh, in the spin option, uh, click on both and then uh, add the line. So we can see that uh, the projected bands, uh, band structure is uh, showed up here with the green lines and uh, we can see that around the Fermi energy uh, most bands are in the p orbitals, are projected in p orbitals. And also we can uh, do it the same for s orbital. By doing the same procedure for s orbital uh, we can see that the uh, Projected band structure for F orbitals uh, are uh, showed up here with green um, uh, dots. And as you can see here that uh, around this energy level is more uh, related is uh, the bands are projected for S orbitals. So what you need is to just deselect all and then just select S orbital and then uh, add the line to get the projected band structure for S orbital. Again, like density of a state, we can extract our band structure results uh, using VAS kit and plot them by other tools that we like. For band structure, VAS kit needs the uh, PROCAR and K points file uh, as input files and give us a band uh, dot, uh, that uh, as output file for total band structure and P band dot that for projected band structure. So what we need to do is just uh, typing uh, or uh, choosing uh, option uh, 21, DFT band structure, and then we can get more options here. The 211 is the total band structure, 212 is projected band structure for selected atoms, and 213 is projected band structure for each element. So it depends on uh, what we, we we like and what we want to plot. We can uh, choose one of these options. Well, as you can see here in uh, p band on the line silicon dot dat, we have uh, all the data for our band structure in different orbitals and in different directions, and uh, also uh, total band structures. So, uh, like uh, density of a state, as I explained already. We could choose uh, uh, one of these columns or, com or combine uh, two or three of these columns and uh, plot them using different software, different tools that uh, we feel more comfort with them, like Origin or like uh, TechPlot or uh, I don't know, like Excel, whatever you desire or GNU plot and uh, plot them with different sizes, with different colors and uh, you can um, have uh, more uh, 
freedom to control your plot. Uh, but uh, using P4 VAS, you will get just uh, very rigid results and you don't have too much freedom to control them, to change the color or... Uh, but uh, it's, I think it's more uh, convenient to use the VAS for teeth to extract the results first. And uh, uh, actually, uh, this is more scientific uh, for uh, publishing the results in papers to use VAS to, to get the extract results and then plot them using other professional softwares. Uh, and also, uh, VAS has more capabilities. Uh, for example, I explained in this channel, uh, we can find the right K-pass for our band structure calculations uh, and many more options that I will try to explain them one by one in this channel. And also, you can uh, uh, check it out uh, and play with the uh, WASKIT in different uh, options uh, to see uh, and test different capabilities of uh, this uh, powerful uh, tool. Well, uh, the good news is that uh, WASKIT also gives us uh, uh, output file that is uh, band uh, on the line gap, and in this gap and in this output file. We can see the band character, which is here, for example, it's indirect and or, or in other structure can be metallic, semi-metallic or whatever. We can uh, get the summary of your band structure in this file. And also the band gap is written here. So the point is that if you is, can see that the band gap uh, in your density of the state calculation is larger than the band gap in your band structure calculation. And uh, these two uh, properties are not consistent. Uh, the, the main source uh, could be because uh, you didn't use the enough dense uh, k-point grids in your density of a state calculation. So in, this, uh, in such these cases, uh, you need to increase the k-point uh, grid in your density of state calculations uh, to remove this inconsistency between your band structure and density of state calculations. I would like to thank you for listening to this video, and I hope that I could explain how to calculate the density of a state and band structure calculation for your structure using VASP and uh, introduce you the main sources that uh, may may cause the inconsistency between the density of the state and band structure calculations uh, that is uh, kind of uh, challenging for uh, researchers in computational materials uh, that uh, sometimes uh, we will get the, this kind of inconsistency between these two properties, density of a state and band structures. I try to introduce you uh, some uh, source of the, this kind of inconsistency, and uh, uh, you, I try to explain how we can remove uh, this uh, source of inconsistency. So please comment here or email to me your feedback and your questions, and I will try to answer them. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified the next videos. And thank you again very much for listening to this video.